the show that magicians around the globe don't want you to see. The Masked Magician is back, out of hiding, daring to expose the world's most highly guarded secrets. You'll find out how they perform amazing appearances, death-defying escapes, baffling levitations, astounding vanishes, mind-blowing sleight of hand, and impossible illusions. No magician is too famous. No trick too big. No secret too sacred. The magician's code will be forever broken on magic's biggest secrets finally revealed. magician pulls back the curtain and exposes the secrets to making a beautiful woman's middle disappear by magic the mystery of Houdini's legendary steamer trunk conjuring spirits from another world plus escaping a life-threatening encounter with the blades of death and much more, right now, on Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. First up tonight, the magician has a mysterious illusion using the old steamer trunk of the late, great Harry Houdini. He'll also use this empty wooden frame. We can see through it. And we can see that it's hinged along one side to form a sturdy support. Next he calls in two of his beautiful assistants and asks for their support. They pick up a heavy wooden triangle that fits securely on the frame. Once it's in place, the triangle and frame form a low table. Thanks for the heavy lifting, girls. Your work here is done. For now. Now for Houdini's trunk. Whoa, careful, it's a priceless antique. And it's empty. This is the same trunk Houdini used on his voyages to perform in Europe. But I bet he never had a traveling companion like this one. She can go the distance. The magician asks her to step into the trunk. Remarkably, she does. I wish he'd tell us that secret. Next, he closes the lid. Then pulls the trunk to the side. Now he uses the trunk to step up onto the table. Houdini probably wouldn't be too pleased about that. He motions for one of his assistants to return with a large sheet. The magician opens the sheet eventually and shows us that there's nothing hidden inside. Now watch carefully. He holds the sheet in front of him and slowly raises it up. He lowers the sheet to prove he's still there. He raises the sheet again and when he lowers it, he's not alone. It's the girl from the trunk, in case you didn't recognize her. But he checks her out, just to be sure. And now for the trunk.
One of the other assistants returns and opens it. Presto, another girl. An incredible illusion, and now this guy's got a full house. So how did the magician make one assistant disappear from Houdini's steamer trunk, reappear on the table, then conjure up another girl from inside the trunk? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician shows us the trunk. The first secret is that hidden behind it is the girl who will appear later. She's on stage from the beginning of the trick. And, by the way, that's not really Houdini's trunk. We made that up because it sounded good. Next, the magician displays the wooden frame, making sure we can see through it. Hidden behind the frame is the next secret. Both halves contain hidden black roller shades. On each corner is a spring-loaded release catch. When the girls place the triangular top on the frame, the pressure trips the spring-loaded catches, and the black shades are released. The audience believes that they can still see through the frame, but they are really looking at the shades. The key is the black backdrop that matches the black shades. As the girls are distracting us with their exit, the concealed assistant slides from behind the trunk into the table. From behind, we can see how the trunk and table hide her from the audience as she sneaks inside. Now that she's no longer in the trunk, the magician is free to tip it over and show that it's empty. He tips it upright and invites his next assistant to join him. At this point, the girl in the table sneaks back out and carefully climbs into the trunk. From this angle, we can see how difficult it is for her to switch locations without being seen while climbing up and over the side of the open trunk. Next, the magician invites his new assistant to climb into the trunk. There's a secret here, too. She merely lifts her legs high, creating the illusion that she is climbing in while really stepping behind the trunk and sinking to the floor. From behind, we can see how convincingly she mimes stepping inside the trunk. Now it's her turn to slide into the table. Yes! The magician slides the trunk away with the concealed girl inside. Next, the magician appears to teleport his assistant from the trunk to the table. He raises the sheet, and there she is. But how did she get there? She waits for the magician to raise the sheet the first time and climbs up onto the table and through his legs. The sheet is lowered, and when it is raised again, she simply stands up a second before it is lowered for her reveal. Lovely. Finally, the trunk is open to reveal the other girl. And that's how it's done. Next, the magician will demonstrate a popular close-up trick that uses nothing more than an ordinary spool of thread. The magician slowly unwinds a length of thread, careful not to drop the spool and send it unraveling across the warehouse. That looks good. Maybe a little more. Okay, that's enough. bit more. He breaks the thread and sets the spool out of the way. As we can see, this length of thread is solid and unbroken. Until now. He breaks the thread into several short pieces.
Next, he crumples some of the short pieces into a small wad, rolling it smaller and tighter as he goes. Happy with his little wad, he takes it and attaches it to the remaining short piece. There it hangs. Some magic and presto. The wad begins to unravel. The short pieces have been restored into one long piece of thread. Okay, mass man, don't string us along. Show us how you did it. So, how did the magician turn the short pieces of thread back into one long piece? Here are the secrets. Before the trick began, the magician unravels double the amount of thread needed for the trick. He then winds the thread carefully into a small ball, mindful not to get any unwanted knots. Next, he carefully winds the thread with the ball back onto the wooden spool hiding the ball, sort of, under the remaining thread. Then when he unravels the thread he uses for the trick, he locates the ball and is careful to conceal it between his thumb and forefinger. He doesn't let the audience know that it's there. He breaks off the end of the thread, which is actually much longer than it appears since half of its length is rolled into that hidden ball. The magician then breaks the thread into smaller lengths, wadding them up in his left hand. Meanwhile, the thread with the concealed ball is held in his right. When we see him supposedly attaching the wad of short pieces onto the thread in his right hand, he's really just pretending to put the pieces together and is concealing this wad in his left hand. But then how does he make his hand appear empty? While he is misdirecting our attention with the ball of thread in his right hand, he's simply throwing away the wad of thread in his left. Now all he has to do is unravel the ball of thread that he secretly wound up before the trick began and create the illusion of restoring the thread. It's simple when you know the secrets. A beautiful girl, alone in the magician's secret warehouse. She'll be his next victim. I mean, volunteer. We haven't seen her before. She looks friendly and well-dressed, too. The magician calls in his assistants. They're always friendly, if sometimes underdressed. They each take the end of a sheet and, on his command, raise the sheet in front of the girl. The magician lifts the sheet to prove that she's still there. Yes, those are her real legs. In this mysterious secret warehouse, you can bet that something devious is about to happen. The magician lowers the sheet, and the assistants carefully place it up and over the girl's head. She had her chance to get out of this trick before it started. Let's see how she ends up. The magician raises the sheet to reveal the girl no longer has a middle. Take a closer look. Amazingly, the girl's midsection has actually disappeared. Incredible. And she's still smiling. Well, that's one way to lose a few inches around the middle. So, how does the magician remove the lady's midsection while her head and legs remain visible for all the world to see? Here are the secrets. When the illusion begins, the magician meets the overdressed girl who is standing in one spot. The fact that she's wearing this curious costume and that she never moves is a clue that something is up. The first secret is hidden in the long skirt, this sturdy wire frame which holds the skirt in place. When the sheet is lifted in front of the girl, she just sneaks out of the back and sinks down behind it. 
With the skirt removed from the frame, we can see her sit down. The next secret is that there is a false panel in the wall. A stagehand behind the wall removes the panel so the girl can lie back and out of sight. Then, a matching panel with a small cutout for her body is replaced, making the wall look solid. This allows her legs to be in view of the audience while her body has vanished. But what about her head and the rest of her upper body? The secret here is that the magician has employed identical twins. Before the trick begins, the second girl is positioned behind the wall on this rolling platform. The cinder blocks on the back of the platform are critical to keep it from tipping over. While the first girl is busy reclining into the fake wall, a second false panel is removed, allowing her identical twin sister to be rolled out into place. This is the girl who gets the sheet draped over her head. The cinder blocks are crucial to ensure that the platform's center of gravity remains behind the wall, allowing the girl to safely ride out beyond the wall without tipping over, ruining the trick, her sister, and herself. Another false panel with a cutout conceals the larger hole in the wall. You might have noticed the girl's unusual posture. This is because she's got to lift her head and upper body at an awkward angle to make it look like she's standing. The magician carefully arranges the sheet over her head and shoulders in an attempt to hide the uncomfortable position. The bulky costume hangs down to hide the underside of the rolling platform. The audience believes they are seeing one girl with no middle. But you know the secrets. Before the magician begins his next trick, we should remind you that he is a professional and that it's never a good idea to play with fire. He'll use the flame from this ordinary candle. Watch the flame. The magician transfers it from the candle to his thumb. Next, he transfers the flame back to the candle, where it belongs. Amazing. And since the trick is over, he blows out the candle, just to be on the safe side. So how does the magician transfer the flame from the candle to the tip of his thumb, then transfer it back without burning himself? Here are the secrets. The candle is real, and so is the flame. Remember, there is an element of danger. The big secret is a small gimmick hidden in his right hand, a flesh-colored plastic shell known as the magician's thumb. It contains a wick in the end. There's the wick. If we look inside, we can see plenty of wick and fireproof padding to protect his thumb. The wick is coated with lighter fluid, which burns brightly without burning the wick too quickly. When it appears that he is transferring the flame to his thumb from the candle, he's really just lighting the wick on the fake tip and using the plastic to extinguish the candle. The audience sees the flaming thumb and thinks he can hold fire in his bare hand. To put the flame back on the candle, he simply uses the thumb tip to light the candle's wick and then uses the wax to snuff out the flame on his plastic thumb. Now that the candle is lit, how does he vanish the fake thumb? He simply hides it in his palm while he is making his magical gestures. It's gone. And now you know the secrets. The magician will perform an illusion that first appeared in the early 1900s, then was updated in the mid-1970s for television audiences. It involves this eight-sided pyramid. Legend has it that evil spirits reside in rooms with square corners, so an eight-sided room should be free of ghosts. We'll see. The magician examines the eight-sided pyramid. There's nothing unusual about it, except that it's an eight-sided pyramid in the middle of an empty warehouse. He calls in two of his beautiful assistants to help him open the doors, revealing that the pyramid is empty and free of evil spirits, at least visible ones. But maybe he can use some magic to conjure some friendly spirits. The assistants return with a sheet and a magical conjuring robe. You can't expect the magician to conjure without the right outfit. I like his personal stylist. 
Apparently, so does he. Easy, big guy. You've got conjuring to do. That's better. Back to work. Magic before pleasure. With a flourish, the magician steps inside the pyramid and goes to work. He takes the sheet from his assistant and holds it over the opening. If he can catch a spirit trying to escape from the eight-sided contraption, this is the best place to do it. He gets ready, then raises the sheet. And what's this? He's got a little movement beneath the sheet. Good for him. Looks like he's got a live one. Not exactly sure what's happening under there, but he seems to be enjoying it. Let's see if he can catch another one. After all, there's another girl standing by with another sheet, which means she wants to see some action too. The magician is happy to oblige, taking the sheet and spreading it out in front of the doorway. He raises it up, hoping he's got some magic left. You can do it. And he does. More jumping under the sheet. This one is even livelier than the first. Twice in one night. Really good for him. But I don't think he's done. After all, the other girl is back with another sheet. The magician steps back into the pyramid, ready to make the magic happen all over again. He gets ready, summoning all of his powers to see if he can make this girl happy, as he takes the sheet from her and spreads it out. He concentrates hard and raises the sheet. giving it a couple of jiggles to get things going. And what do you know? He's managed to find some life for the third straight time. And this one is even bigger than the other two. I have to hand it to the masked magician, but he's had enough. So he heads back into the pyramid to relax in his fancy robe. The girls close the doors to give him some privacy while the spirits continue to do their spirit thing. As the girls begin to open the cabinet, the spirits are revealed to be two more beautiful assistants. But what about the one in the middle? It's the masked magician. Where did he come from? The pyramid is empty. So maybe the masked man has been in touch with his spirit side all along. So, how did the magician conjure spirits from his empty eight-sided pyramid, then appear as one of them? Here are the secrets. When the trick begins, the magician shows us that the pyramid is empty, but it's not. There are two mirrors built into the inside of the pyramid. See the girl's reflection? Hidden in a compartment behind the mirror are his two assistants and a body double. Here they are from the front. It's a tight fit, but the body double doesn't seem to mind. First, the magician holds the sheet high, covering the view inside the pyramid. At this moment, one of the assistants swings open the mirror, steps out of the compartment, closes the mirror behind her, and sneaks in behind the sheet. The magician drapes the sheet over her, and she moves backward toward the audience. Then the magician raises a second sheet. This is when the second assistant steps out from behind the mirror and slips behind the sheet. It's her turn to walk backward toward the audience. Here's how it would look without the sheet in place. With the sheet, it appears that the magician has conjured another spirit. And if you were wondering why the magician was wearing a magic robe, Here's another secret. Most magicians who perform this trick don't go around wearing masks. 
so they have to use a cloak like this to distract the audience and obscure their identity. Their doubles wear identical robes, so the audience doesn't notice the big switch. When the magician raises the third sheet, the switch takes place. The magician's double comes out of the compartment and takes his place holding the sheet, while the magician sneaks under the sheet and walks towards the audience. Without the sheet, this is how it looks. That's the double, standing in the doorway of the pyramid. As the magician bounces toward the audience, the double heads inside the pyramid. As soon as the doors are closed, the double folds the secret mirrors against the side panels and simply sneaks out of the back into the darkness of the warehouse. The assistants reveal themselves and then reveal the magician as the pyramid is opened to show that he's vanished. But you know the secrets. Next, the magician will demonstrate the magical powers of his superhuman strength using this ordinary light bulb. Keep your eye on the bulb. He places it firmly in his right hand. Next, he covers it with his left and squeezes. Like magic, the light bulb has been pulverized into invisible dust, vanished into the ether. He's done it again. So how did the magician make an ordinary light bulb disappear without a trace? Here are the secrets. First, concealed in his right hand is a retractable cord that goes inside his jacket to a spring-loaded key ring on his belt. Attached to the end is a suction cup that easily sticks to the smooth light bulb. When it appears that he is preparing to crush the bulb between his hands, he's actually just sticking the suction cup to the sides. See? Now when he pretends to pulverize the bulb into nothing, he's really just hiding it in his hand so we don't see it being pulled away by the retractable line. He then makes some mystical waves of his hand and it appears the bulb has vanished. But now you know where it went. Next, the magician will demonstrate a card trick with a dangerous twist. We want you to know up front this is not something you want to attempt at home. His assistant will act as a volunteer. The magician begins with an ordinary deck of playing cards. He fans them, then shows them to his beautiful volunteer. Next, he invites her to pick a card at random and write a name across the face. I would have asked her to write her phone number. Wow, nice penmanship. The magician takes the card and does some scribbling of his own, drawing a line beneath the name. He shows it to the girl. And now he begins to shuffle the cards to bury her cards somewhere inside the deck. He offers the cards to her as he removes a very imposing samurai sword from its scabbard. This sword is very real, very sharp, and is what makes this trick so dangerous. He takes the cards from the girl and positions them in his left hand. With his right, he picks up the sword. He carefully slides the sword into his hand, balancing the deck on the blade. Watch as he counts to three and flips the cards into the air stabbing into them. One card is impaled on the sword, wouldn't you know. There's the girl's chosen three of spades, complete with her handwriting. It's a good trick to impress the girls, but I still would have asked for a number. How did the magician find the chosen card with the razor-sharp blade of his samurai sword? Here are the secrets. He begins by showing his volunteer an ordinary deck of cards. She makes a genuinely random selection and writes a name across the face as instructed. 
they place it back on the deck. And the magician takes his pen and underlines the name. The first secret is that the pen contains a concealed razor blade. Cool. When he underlines the name, he's really slicing a slit in the card. There it is. Next, when he shuffles the cards, he's really using a phony shuffle that allows the chosen card to remain undisturbed on the bottom of the deck. See? There's her card. In slow motion, we can see how he's only shuffling the top cards, leaving the bottom card untouched. Next, he balances the deck on the blade of the sword. What he's really doing is sliding the sword through the slit he cut with the razor pen. He throws the cards in the air, and amazingly, the chosen card appears to have been impaled. Even in slow motion, we can see that the flurry of cards creates enough of a diversion to hide the one card that's already been speared by the sword. If we switch to another angle and freeze the picture, we can see that the card is pierced by the sword the entire time. Stabbing a card by magic is easy. Once, you know... Next, the magician attempts a perilous escape. Will he make it out alive before he's sliced to ribbons by the rotating blades of death? For his last illusion tonight, the magician will take on one of the most death-defying escapes ever attempted. Remember, never try to duplicate any of the magician's tricks at home. This is a very perilous stunt that our world-class professional has been practicing for months. As we can see, giant steel blades provide the danger in this illusion. This triangular-shaped box will provide the magician's prison. The razor-sharp blades are held at the ends of the steel rails by a rope. Inside the box is a beautiful assistant, but she'd be crazy to stay inside because that box is directly in the path of those terrifying blades. The magician releases a safety cable on one of the blades. Now things are getting dangerous. Next, he crosses over to release the cable on the other blade. Now a single rope is holding the blades in place. Again, do not attempt anything like this at home. The magician climbs into the box and the door is closed. His assistants secure his hands on the outside of the box. His wrists are locked with heavy chains and bulletproof locks. With his hands shackled on either side of the box, the magician has no way to reach the chains or pick the locks. His goal will be to escape before the blades travel down the rails and into the box, slicing him to ribbons. the blades begin to rotate. He struggles with the chains. Better hurry, those blades won't wait. Next, the other assistant returns with a torch. She uses the torch to set fire to the rope. When it burns through, the blades will be sent crashing into the box and the magician. His hands are free, but he's not out. There they go. A 
they slammed into the box and he didn't get out in time. They're still spinning. All hope of escape is now lost. The executioner is back to open the box. This won't be pretty. He's gone. But where did he go? Right here, of course. The magician is turned into the executioner, safe and sound, with his beautiful girls by his side. How did he do it? Here are the secrets. At the start of the illusion, the magician reveals an assistant inside the triangular box. This is to show that there isn't much room inside the box. But there is room, and she wasn't alone. Hidden behind this false panel is the magician's body double. He's in place before the magician ever steps inside. When we see the magician climb into the cabinet, he's really just slipping out through the back. From behind, we can see him sneak out, leaving his double inside. The double then slides back to replace the magician, and it's his hand we see being shackled and chained. Next, the double flips a switch to activate the blades. Then his other hand is locked in place, and the audience thinks the magician is secured in the cabinet and struggling to escape. Meanwhile, the magician is being wheeled off stage inside the staircase the assistants use to reach the top of the box. With the spinning blades and flaming torches, the audience doesn't even notice that the girls are taking the staircase off stage. Next, the executioner enters to light the rope and add some danger. Off stage, the magician is slipping into an identical executioner's rope. Now, while the rope is burning, we see the double slip out of the manacles. But how? He simply slides his hands out of the chains and into the box because the chains have been rigged. The metal frame that holds the chains contains a spring-loaded pulley, which allows him to slide the chains out, releasing enough slack to slip his hands through. The audience thinks they see the flames burn through the rope, sending the blades into the box. But inside, it's really the double pulling a ripcord and releasing the blades. The burning rope is just for dramatic effect. But how does the double escape being sliced to shreds by the blades? With the front of the box open, we can see that the blades are carefully positioned to enter the front half of the box. Plenty of room. Next, the magician takes the torch from his assistant and returns to the stage. We don't even stop to think it's really him. He opens the box to reveal the blades and we can't see the double behind the false panel. He removes the cloak and reveals himself as the executioner. He may have fooled you once, but he won't fool you with this one again, now that you know the secrets. Next time, the masked magician returns to reveal more of magic's biggest secrets. Talia Briggs. That's what I do. Doesn't make no difference to me if it's Dusseldorf or Darling. If you embarrass us, we'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. A very appropriate metaphor, Mr. Turnbull. Our feed is aimed pet Tuesday and Wednesday at 9 o'clock on ITV4.